idea behind our horsemanship challenge is to motivate people to push beyond the spot where they are with their horsemanship today and hopefully get to that place where they're closer to developing that true harmony that they're looking for with their horse. On this episode of Carrie Coon's Horsemanship Challenge, we begin the first of a multi-part series featuring Lisa Everson and her barrel horse, Mighty. Although the challenge that brought Lisa and Mighty to Carrie seemed minor, their story illustrates that small symptoms can actually be covering up a bigger, more complex issue. Let's join Carrie as he talks to Lisa right before they go to the arena. So Lisa, why don't you tell us a little bit about your horse over there? Well, I bought Mighty in the spring, and I bought him from a friend of mine who I had hauled with before. So I've known the horse. The horse is 16 years old, but I've known the horse since he was five. Okay. So I'm just having a hard time getting with him now. I really, really like him. He's fun to ride. He's a, he's a good horse. He'll go in the gate easy. He's a lot of fun, but he's a big horse. He's a lot bigger horse than my other horse. He's 16 too. And he'll kind of sling back on the back side of the barrel sometimes and hit it with his hip coming out. So I need help getting him to bend, basically. Okay. Because he'll, he definitely will catch it if you don't, if you can't get him to bend. Can you give us a little more information as far as his background? Who had him before you? What, what he was, were they doing with him? How long did they compete on him? He's been a barrel horse forever, but um, Connie Combs trained him originally. Okay. And my girlfriend Tracy rode him, but she didn't haul him a lot. And then she gave him to her daughter. And her, I think he has kiditis. He got away with stuff. Okay. She has um, back problems and can't ride anymore, so she sold him. Okay, okay. Now, kiditis, is that a Missouri term? <laughs> it's a term that we made up for when you let your kids ride your horse and right, they get away with right. too much. Right, and, and it, it's, it's funny you mention that. That's something we can all relate to. Right. I mean, whether it's, whether it's your horse, whether it's a horse that I've seen or, and worked with in Illinois last weekend, when when kids tend to handle horses a lot of times they don't maybe they don't have as much knowledge because they haven't been doing it that long or maybe it's just the fact that they're so small and these horses are so big they can be intimidating to the kids so typically these horses find little ways to take advantage of things and if you leave a horse in that frame of mind long enough it as you might be seeing with this horse sometimes it's hard to overcome all that oh he's so definitely the whole kid itis term <laughs> We know, we know exactly what you're thinking there. Now, how long has it been since you've, since you've hauled this horse to a competition? I hauled him last weekend. You hauled him last weekend, okay. How did he feel at that show? I, okay, I'm, I'm starting to keep him up now. At first I was hitting a lot of barrels, but he's still stalling out on the backside with me. He's not, I mean, he's given his nose now, but he's still kind of just stalling out on the back. Okay. Not as bad as he has been. I mean, I, the funny thing with this horse is I'm placing all over the place with him. I mean, I'm having bad runs and I'm getting a check because he'll stall out so bad he'll fall in the 40. Okay. So, so even when the horse doesn't feel as good as you wish he could, you're still winning money. Yeah, he's giving me money. So, <laughs> so we know there's a lot of talent there. We just need to have a little, a little better control of how all these body parts move when they go around those barrels. Correct. Hopefully today what we'll be able to offer you with, with our ideas is we've got to make sure that we've got a solid enough foundation before we start to compete on these horses. So we're going we're gonna to fall back to square one and we're going to see what this horse feels like before we even set the barrels up. We're going to make sure that we can break this horse into different pieces. We can move each piece. We've got good control of that. Things feel good. They feel soft and then we'll set these barrels up and ease our way into it. When, when we're talking competition, whether it's barrel racing or roping or reining, a lot of times we get, and, and I grew up rodeoing, so, so I know the idea and the mentality a lot of times that takes over when we get to that show. We, we do all our homework at home, we practice as, as well as we know for our horse and for us, and then when we get to the show, 
we have all these intentions of how we want it to be and then all of a sudden we just we ride in that arena and it just leaves us so we're going to back up we're going to start from square one we're going to make sure that we've got the foundation we need before we add a bunch of speed to this barrel pattern the other problem with mighty and me is that my other horse lets me make mistakes i mean he's that solid. He's 18 years old. He was a rodeo horse. I can literally, I started changing my hand on the backside of the first barrel with him. Okay. Which is, you know, I mean, I'm not finishing my barrel when I do that. So my, besides Mighty's kiditis, I have Yankee-itis. I mean, Yankees let me make tons of mistakes. Okay. And get checks. <laughs> well, and, and that brings up another good point. Uh, as we expand our horsemanship, meaning we move from horse to horse. We start to see different things. We start to feel different things. And sometimes those horses that we start on, that we learn from, yes, they give us an idea of how we want things to feel, but as you pointed out, they let us get by with doing some things that maybe we shouldn't do, or if we bring it out in into the mix on the next horse maybe cause a lot of problems. Uh, it, it's definitely. I mean, I blame myself for a lot of what goes on with Mighty because Yankee has let me get away with so much. Well, I'm, I'm truly honored to be here and I, I really appreciate your willingness to be a part of our show and uh, to let us play around with your horse a little bit. Let's head on out to the arena and see what we can get done. Great. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Building a willing attitude in your horse is easier when you use the right tools. The Kerry Coon Practical Horsemanship Store carries everything you need to be successful, including specially designed tack, training DVDs, and online registration for Kerry's clinics and events. You'll also find products that will help you improve your horsemanship lifestyle, including CSI saddle pads, quick coupler hitches, Hylon joint supplement, and more. Log on today at www.kerrycoonstore.com. Be sure to enter the code HMSC09 at checkout and save $15 on any product order of $100 or more. No matter what extreme you go to, a CSI saddle pad will make the difference in your horse's performance. Roping, trail, eventing, reining, cutting, and beyond, our pad gives your horse the protection and freedom of movement he needs to excel. Buy yours online now or call toll-free 877-274-7230. I love my quick coupler. It's safe, fast, and easy to use. It has a full 5.5 inch self-aligning capture area. I just get close and it latches automatically. There's no crawling into the bed of the truck. Trailer Gear's quick coupler takes the hassle out of hooking up my trailer. Carrie Coon is proud to use and endorse Purina Mills Feeds. Visit your local Purina dealer today and take advantage of the decades of research they have done on equine nutrition. Your horse will thank you. <laughs> 